Earlier in the week, we were talking about teaching elementary music classroom rules using rhythm patterns and body percussion. Then we talked about taking those classroom rules and setting them to rhythm instruments. Today, I would like to talk a little bit about how you would differentiate those activities for students of different ages and abilities. You can do the same basic activities with students from kindergarten through fifth grade, and this is a very wide range of abilities. When you're teaching these activities, you're going to have completely different objectives with kindergarten and first grade than you would have with the upper grades. Your objectives for kindergarten and first grade are going to be very simple. You want them to follow the director's cues, to start and stop when you stop, and you'll teach them to the chant and to play the rhythm of the words by rote. And when they perform, they will perform in unison. But students at second and third grade will have a little bit more advanced objectives. They will also practice following the director's cues, but at the second and third grade levels, they're going to learn to play the rhythm rules by reading the simple rhythmic notation. Students at this level can usually perform in two parts, layering one part on top of the other. Students at the fourth and fifth grade level will practice following the director's cues, playing the rhythm patterns in unison while reading the notation, but fourth and fifth grade students should be able to play simple rhythm patterns that we demonstrated yesterday in four parts. That creates some real challenge and interest at the upper elementary grades while keeping it very simple for the early elementary students. And each day of class builds on the previous session. On day one, students learn just the basic rhythm rules and the added body percussion. On day two, students at all levels add rhythm instruments, either in unison or in parts. On day three, all students get to add boom whackers. And this alone really ramps up the engagement and hooks students on that day. On day four, I like to add rotation stations so that students can rotate through all of those. That gives students plenty of time to practice and it really helps them to internalize the classroom rules and those rhythm patterns that go with them. I put a link to the full blog post that has more information and tips for implementing these differentiated activities. The blog post also has a link to the free posters and it has a link to the full music rules activity, which I know that you and your students are going to love. If you have any questions about how to implement this in your classroom, or if you have any tips or tricks that you have used, leave a comment or send me a message. I'll get back to you ASAP. No matter how you're teaching this year, whether you're back in your classroom, or if you're on a cart, or if you're still teaching via distance learning or some sort of hybrid situation, using music rhythm rules can be adapted to any situation. I wish you and your students all the best. Take care.